Hello everyone, my name is Umar Khan and my roll number is 16. Our group is going to explain prevention of waste, one of the topic of green chemistry. So, what is green chemistry? Green chemistry is defined as the design of chemical products and processes to reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances. This definition and the concept of green chemistry were first formulated in the beginning of the 1990s, nearly 20 years ago. In the years since there has been international adoption that resulted in the creation of literally hundreds of programs and governmental initiatives on green chemistry around the world. These have played a significant role in forming sustainable design. The three main points about the green chemistry framework can be summarized as first, green chemistry designs across all stages of chemical life cycle. Second, Green chemistry seeks to design the inherent nature of the chemical products and processes to reduce their intrinsic hazard. Third, green chemistry works as a cohesive system of principles or design criteria. Hello everyone, my name is Sudeep Khotkar and my role number is 17. There are total 12 principles of green chemistry. In this presentation, we are going to discuss about the first principle that is preventing waste. Waste prevention is the first of the 12 principles of green chemistry. It is better to prevent the formation of waste rather than to clean it. The generation of any material that does not have any realized value or the loss of unutilized energy can be considered a waste. As mentioned, waste can take many forms and may impact the environment. Depending on its nature, toxicity or its quantity or the way it is released, when a large portion of initial raw materials used in a process are lost because of the original design of the process itself, then it will inexorably generate waste which is by definition undesirable. Thank you Sudeep. Myself Atharva. I will be telling you about the E-factors. The E-factor includes waste byproducts, leftover reactants, solvent losses, spent catalysts, catalyst supports, and anything else that can be regarded as a waste. Its calculation depends upon what is defined as waste. For example, water is a significant byproduct of many chemical processes and is generally harmless, so its mass is usually omitted from the total mass of waste in the calculation. However, it may be included in those processes in which it is severely contaminated and difficult to reclaim in a form that is pure enough to use or discharge to a publicly owned wastewater treatment facility. So only the reactant that cannot be salvaged is counted in the waste. The chart shown in the slide depicts the e-waste produced in tons by various chemical processes annually, in which pharmaceutical industry has topped the chart. Until recently, a very little amount of attention was given to pharmaceutical waste, but nowadays, they are becoming a leader in the implementation of green chemical practice. However, pharmaceuticals are metabolically active and their presence in drinking water can be a concern. Now my mate, Prasad, will lead you further. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm roll number 19. Now, I'm going to talk about the greener synthesis based on the first principle of the famous pharmaceutical drug ibuprofen. It is one of the products used in large quantities for making pharmaceutical drugs in particular various kinds of painkillers. In the old synthetic route, each step had a yield of 90% so that the final product came to be 40% yield compared to the starting chemical. This resulted in increased production of byproducts as waste. This drug was produced annually 3000 tons and we understand the substantial amounts of chemicals were lost as waste. The new technology involves three catalytic steps with approximately 80% atom utilization and replaces technology with six stoichiometric steps and less than 40% atom utilization. The use of anhydrous hydrogen fluoride as both catalyst and solvent offers important advantages in reaction selectivity and waste reduction. Now, the above slide shows the advantages of the greener method used over the old one. Now, my mate Jay would like to continue further. Hi, my name is Jay. Today, pharmaceutical industry is seeking different methods to develop medicines. Uh, the methods which has less harmful side effects and the process which is less hazardous. 
For generations, molecular scientists have invented the molecules, materials and manufacturing process that have allowed economy and societal development. In doing so, preventing waste has shown that through innovations, company can be more economically profitable and more environmental benign at the same time. Hence, the 12 principle of green chemistry provide a good starting point. Many newer reactions do not offer this sort of flexibility of optimization. It is our responsibility to design the reactions that are safe and sustainable, both with the regards to the individual, the environment, as well as the operating cost. With, with this in mind, applying the principle of green chemistry should become second nature to us, from the initial planning of the reaction on the bench top, all the way to large scale output. And hence, we conclude that green chemistry is not a solution of every problem, but is the fundamental approach for preventing pollution. Thank you.